Hey everybody, it's Mario Time 1000 and what the f what is this? This is not the this is not the table. Yeah, this is not the table. I'm refilming the beginning of this video because the original beginning of this video was just the table I usually make my videos on and nothing. Like I I didn't hold anything. I wasn't doing anything. So, I got to liven it up just a little bit to make it slightly more interesting, not just a table. So I'm starting a new series uh, today, and that is going to be me showing off all of the custom diecasts, custom NASCAR diecasts that I have built over the years since 2018. And I just realized not too long ago, I have never really shown any of them off in any of my videos. These two were in my last video, but a uh, little, little bit of an interesting note about this car. It wasn't even finished when it was in the background of my last video. Um, it doesn't have a hood. It doesn't have any of the window. I, I'll save that. I'll save that for the for the episode that I talk about that car. But this is a little precursor, I guess, to what that ser what what is going to be upcoming in this series. But yeah, I've never talked about these on YouTube, and this is a good way to fill up the gaps between F1 diecasts or any other type of video I make on this channel. And uh, I think it's interesting. I think custom. I think people are interested in uh, custom cars. Now, the first cars I'm going to show off here are actually not any of these. They are some customs I built in 2016. Uh, they're, they're not the best. The method I use to build these cars is really, really dumb, really weird. So uh, I'll show those off first, and then we will move right into the first custom, which is the one right here. And... Uh, now, the rest of the video is going to be the original video that I filmed a long time ago, so I will never acknowledge this intro ever again. And just so I can transition perfectly into the original video, I will say this right here. The first custom car, the really shitty first custom car I ever built back in 2016 is, of course, a Ryan Seed car. And my god, I have not had to work with cars so small in so long. I am not going to like this. This is going to be car. So yes, this is a custom Ryan C car. The way I made this car is I covered a regular 164 scale die cast in whiteout and then used Sharpie to make the scheme. Uh, so yeah, it's um, a... a an interesting method. I've seen people make videos about making custom cars with whiteout before, so it's not something I invented, but oh my god, I mean, it, it, it doesn't look great, and you see you got a bunch of whiteout on the windows. This scheme you see, this Ryan Sieg scheme, you'll see again. I'm not really sure why I liked the scheme so much, but you will see it again in this video. It is on the Chevy SS body. I think this was originally an Outback Steakhouse Kevin Harvick car. Uh, even though Ryan Sieg has never driven the 39 in the Cup Series, I wanted to do it this way for some reason. I don't know why, but uh, that's what I did. The way I made the decals uh, was I put a NASCAR diecast in the on the printer and just printed them out. So if we get up close, I don't know how close it's going to let me get. Eh, sort of close. Uh... I mean, yeah, you can see that they're not super good. I printed this 39 off of the internet, and you can see it's sort of coming up at the bottom. I just freaking put a glue stick, glue stick, glued them on. And you can see the name board. It says Harvick right there. So, yeah, it was a Kevin Harvick diecast. No diecast for Ryan Sieg actually exists, so I couldn't put a real name banner on there, so I just didn't put anything on there. But, yeah. Uh, interesting. I'll uh, move on to the next one because it's sort of the same deal. I would say, though, like, the way I got, like, the spoiler and stuff and the splitter, pretty, pretty cool. This right here is Cole Witt, um, once again from 2016 for Premium Motorsports. Uh, same sort of deal here. I printed the decals out from a real NASCAR diecast, except this time I used the 2016 one because it's got slightly updated, like, floodlights. And then for, like, the 98 and the sponsors... I just found a picture on Google and uh, printed it off from there, made sure they were the right size, and uh, taped them on there, or glued them on there, I guess. And a Cole Witt diecast, official Cole Witt diecast, actually exists, so I was able to take it off of that and put it on here, or print it out. I wasted a lot of paper, I didn't do no scanning or anything, 
Oh, what's going on in the corner? It's like cracked up, probably because of the whiteout. Uh, yeah, these are not great, I would say, but uh, I don't know. They were fun. It was a really dumb way to make a custom die cast, but I would consider, even though the way was really stupid, they don't look too bad. But these are the first two custom die casts I ever technically made. I don't know why I said technically. Well, I, I say technically because I don't really count them. I say I've made five customs because these are these are like the alpha. The alpha stage of me making custom cards. Like, it doesn't really count as the finished product. Like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. But uh, that, I just wanted to show them off because it, it's worth showing off. Now, the real first custom card that I made is... Another Ryan Sieg car. It is the Ryan Sieg something. I don't know what I don't know what I'd call it. It's not really like a sponsor. Uh, there's Uncle Bob on there, so there's that. But it's just Ryan Sieg. I think the decal sheet I bought was called Ryan Sieg 2 2015. And that is what I have here. So we're seeing this scheme again. This uh, red and the yellow band. I have no idea why I liked this scheme so much. Uh, I first really started i first started like noticing ryan sieg how good they were doing in 2015 this is from 2015 and i guess the simplistic nature of this this scheme is uh i i i've always kind of liked it for that reason it's got all the ryan sieg colors like the original black red and yellow um and this was easy at the time, but provided like a little bit of a challenge because uh, it's got this, these, the red and yellow bits. I could have just made an all black Ryan Sieg, but I wanted to do something a little bit challenging, but not like the Uncle Bob car that had a fade in it. I think that's why I chose this scheme. Uh, and of course, from 2015, as I just said, that was my first year of considering Ryan Sieg like one of my favorite drivers. Um, so I figured it'd be a good fit for my first car to build one from 2015. Uh, this was originally a Chase Elliott car. Uh, I don't have a picture of it when it was a Chase Elliott car, but I have a picture of this car on the box that it came in. Although I do not have the box anymore, but that is a story for a little bit later. Um, it took me about a year to make this car, which might be surprising to you. I bought the die cast and then probably didn't buy the decals for like another few months and then once I had the decals I didn't I just I just sat on this for a really long time because it was my first time I was just worried about like messing it up and stuff I don't know um I'm gonna say this first and foremost I've only made five of these I've said that a lot uh but I'm not a professional at doing this there are it's certainly not gonna look like a Lionel car and it's not gonna look like any of those other custom diecast makers that you've probably seen on YouTube or on Twitter or something like that. I don't sell my cars, so there are a lot of things you're going to see on my cars that you might say yeah. like that, like that, that, that right there. You might say, wow, that looks like shit, man. Your car suck. And, uh, you know, there's a lot into making custom diecasts. I have the finished product here. That's all you guys can see, but... It, there's a lot of work into making these and I have the memories or the memories of the memories of making this car and that that makes it a lot better for me and any mistake I've made on this car I improve in the next one I'll talk a little bit about more of that uh, in, in a bit in a bit when we do a closer look at the car I'm getting ahead of myself here let's let's take a look at this car uh, remember this is my first one it's from 2018 so we'll start on the side uh, one thing I would recommend you doing if you are going to make a custom car is make your own decals if you can. Because if you buy decals from somebody else, you're playing in somebody else's court. Case in point, the side right here. You can see the jack stand doesn't line up with the, de the die cast. The decal and die cast do not line up. I have no idea what template this car was supposed to be made on or was supposed to be used on. Uh, the decals, I don't know what the guy made his template for because uh, they certainly have never fit properly on an Xfinity die cast, which is what I thought they were made for. Um, here's the back. Turned out pretty well. I just sort of cut the whole decal out and taped it on. Or I said tape it. It's, it's a sticker. It's a decal. Uh, so, yeah, stuck it on there. I never would do the whole back on it again. You'll see that in future video. You can see that the... Uh, 
little the decal here at the end does not quite fit over the fender properly like i said i mean i have no idea what these are made for you see the exhaust do not fit over where it is on the die cast uh this was my first time so i didn't know that i was going to have to fidget with these decals to make them fit right make it look right um that's what i was talking about earlier like uh this die cast i see the airs and i don't really mind them that much because in the next one I didn't do that, or I didn't do that as much, or something like that. Uh, if I made this die cast today, uh, I would certainly cut the damn door handle off. I don't know why I left so much of the decal black on there. Um, I don't, no one who, nobody cares about the door handle. And for the rest of the series, you will never see the stupid fucking door handle again. I, I don't know why I felt so compelled to leave it on there. But I did, and by the, and also this window right here, I, I don't. I guess I didn't glue it in very well. It didn't just break. Yeah, I don't see any glue on this, so I guess I just didn't glue it in. And I just don't feel like taking this car apart to fix that. So it usually just sits on a shelf. So I'm not particularly worried about that. I'll just put the window back on uh, when I get back. The front is what I was talking about. So the front is by undoubtedly the worst part of this this particular one. Uh, the, 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 the 39, the Camaro, it's missing the RSS logo. I don't know if I just forgot to put it on there or the decal set didn't come with it. Uh, but all the other Ryan C cars I made have had the RSS logo on here. So I, I'm inclined to believe I forgot to put it on there. Uh, it's mainly the grill, the Camaro grills here. This one's cut a little weirdly. You can hardly see it. So it's not a big deal, but this grill up here is fucked up. The decals did not fit this mold. I've said it a thousand times, but they did not fit it very well. So I really had to shimmy to get this grill in here. And you can see, you can see some of the paint underneath. I cut this part too short. Um, and you might say, oh man, this looks like shit. You should have just thrown this fucking car away. But like I said, the finished product is... It's a lot more to this means a lot more to me than just the finished product because I had fun building it. It was an experiment, and I know that if I fuck something up here, I'll do it right on the next car. So the grills always every other car except maybe the next one I'll show looks better than this one. And so I can look at this one and be like, yeah, it kind of looks like shit or whatever. But uh, I had fun building it. Like I've seen, I've I've seen a lot more of this car than anyone else has so if you think it looks like shit you're right but also like i don't i don't look at this car like i look at my old videos and be like oh that looks like shit because my old videos i didn't have some i didn't have a lot of fun watching them or making them and shit this i had fun making and the product is pretty good uh i would say and now it's time to talk about the thing I have been avoiding, everyone's talking about it, it's signed. It's signed by Ryan Sieg. I got this fucking car signed by Ryan Sieg. Um, I, I knew I was, I went to Daytona for the 2020 Daytona 500. And uh, I knew about it for a little while, but like two weeks before it actually happened, I, um, I realized that I'm going to be able to see this Xfinity race. I need to get this signed. It's got to be my goal. I got to go there with a purpose. And so that is what I did. I bundled this car up in its box and bubble wrap because I didn't have like the plastic or the foam stuff anymore. And it went to Florida with it. Uh, I got a little damaged on the plane. You saw that little dink on the spoiler there, probably. Um, that got dinked. Also, the hood right here got dinked a little. The hood actually opens up on this car. One of the few cars that I have that the hood opens up. Usually I just glue them down because uh, like that, like the, something like that could happen. Um, but yeah, I got this car signed on the first day. I was only there two days, like 30 minutes into the day I got it signed. And let me tell you what, your favorite driver needs to be in the Xfinity series because if you go to the cup callers, I mean, there's like stacks of tires, there's shit everywhere. You cannot, you cannot find any of the cup drivers, especially if they're like at the front of the field. Like the back markers, I saw a few of them, um, but Xfinity Series, it was not like that. It was during qualifying. I just went up to the hauler, the Ryan Sieg hauler. There were dudes sitting in camping chairs like, where's Ryan Sieg, bro? Didn't say it quite like that. And he, then, he, then he showed up and then I got it signed. Get her done. 
He said that to me. I didn't just say that like I'm going insane during this video. He he said that to me. Uh, he said a bunch of other stuff, but I was I was starstruck, bro. Like I've not met a lot of NASCAR drivers before. I I it was it was something else. Like it was it was cool. And he was leading the qualifying session when I saw him. So that that's it's epic, bro. And that is the first diecast I've ever made. I guess I'd better point this out. It also does not have the name banner on it, except it did not show up. It did not, like, unlike the first car that I showed you, me sharpieing out the name did not work too well. And you can clearly see that this is a Chase Elliott car, uh, or was. I don't know why I didn't put the name on here. I also don't know why I didn't put the American ethanol, the green fuel thing on here. Uh, those are both things that we would fix. I don't know why I said we, I would fix in the next one and the next one and the next one and the next one as we continued on. But yeah, this is the first Ryan Sieg diecast I've ever made. First custom diecast I ever made. It is not perfect, but, uh, it's pretty cool. I think still. So yeah, um, that's, that's really all I have to say about it. I've been recording for like 20 minutes. So, not really a short video. Uh, I keep seeing stuff, though. I didn't put the shark fin on this car, either. Man, this car sucks, bro. Why did I... I should just throw this car away. But, yeah, that, that's all I really have to say. Um, here's the bottom. It's, it's it's not... It's it's. This is the car. This is the first custom car I ever made. The other videos will be shorter. I plan on also, in the future, doing, a, like, a how I build these. but Because uh, I didn't really go into the in depth on the methods that I you did to make this car. Um, I'm just going to end the video now because I, uh, uh, bye.